Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is the 1939 Cleveland Bears Negro American League Baseball season. After a five-year absence, Negro League Baseball was back in Cleveland. And the Bears were the 10th Negro, ba- Negro League Baseball team in Cleveland, following the Tate Stars, Browns, Elites, Hornets, Tigers, Cubs, Stars, Giants, and Red Sox. And like the Tate Stars, the Bears lasted two, two seasons. The, all, all the other teams uh, were only lasted one season. Now, the, uh, the, the Bears played in the Negro American League, which had been established in 1937. So now the Negro Leagues had, similar to MLB, they also had an American League and a National League. Uh, and uh, the Bears played uh, home games in Cleveland at Cleveland Municipal Stadium. The Cleveland Bears in 1939 had a strong year, had a pretty good year. They finished in third place with a record of 20 and 21, winning percentage of 488, 10 and a half games out of first. The first place team was the Kansas City Monarchs, who were 42 and 22, winning percentage of 656. Second place, the Chicago American Giants, who were 38 and 34, eight games out of first. Third place, the Cleveland Bears, 20 and 21. Fourth place, the St. Louis Stars, 15 and 17. Fifth place, the Toledo Crawfords, who were 8 and 11. Yeah, the, the t- tremendous Pittsburgh Crawfords had, had, had moved to Toledo. Uh, it, was, it was unthinkable. S- the sixth place, the Indianapolis, sixth place, the Indianapolis ABCs slash Atlanta Black Crackers, who were 6 and 10. And in seventh and last place, the Memphis Red Sox, 15 and 21, winning percentage of 341, 17 games out of first. The Jacksonville Red Caps moved to Cleveland and became the 1939 Cleveland Bears. And as I said, they lasted two years in Cleveland and then moved back to Jacksonville for the 1941 season. Roy Campanella, who was playing in the Negro Leagues during this era, said, wrote this quote. We'd pile into the bus after the game, break open boxes of sandwiches, and finish the meal with some hot coffee as we headed for the next town and the next game. The bus was our home, dressing room, dining room, and hotel. 1939, Campanella was with the Baltimore Elite Giants, and he wrote, quote, Twice that summer, I caught two doubleheaders in one day. One of these was a doubleheader in Cincinnati on a Sunday afternoon. A bus ride to Middletown, Ohio for another twin bill that night. Three hot dogs and a few bottles of pop was all I needed for fuel on the ride to Middletown. I'm reading a fine book. The title is The The Best Pitcher in Baseball, The Life of Rube Foster, Negro League Giant, by Robert Charles Cottrell, 2001. Remember, Rube Foster had established the the Negro, the first version of the Negro National League, the the first... uh, Negro League uh, that lasted for any period of time lasted 10 years. 1938, Leo DeRocher, famous MLB star and manager, wrote wrote this quote, or said this, I played against Josh Gibson in Cincinnati, and I found out everything they said about him was true, and then some. He hit one of the longest balls I've ever seen. He caught hold of one of Jim Weaver's fast ones, and I bet you it's still sailing. Some consider Josh Gibson the greatest Negro League hitter of all time. As I said, in 1939, the Pittsburgh Crawfords uh, had, were in, uh, had moved to Toledo, and Greenfie- Greenlee Field, quote, one-time palace of black ball, was demolished. So this was very, very sad. Composey replaced Gus Greenlee as the power in the Negro National League. Satchel Page was with the Kansas City Monarchs during this era, or part of this time, Buck O'Neill, who played for the Kansas City Monarchs between 1938 <coughs> and 1947, wrote this quote, The Kansas City Monarchs were in the front row, man, the front row. We stayed at the best hotels, ate in the best restaurants. They just happened to be black. Every day we frequented the best nightclubs, saw the best entertainers in the world. <coughs> and these included Cab Calloway, Charlie Parker, and Duke Ellington. Tremendous success of the Kansas City Monarchs is, is a, ma- a major reason why the Negro League uh, Hall of Fame is in Kansas City. I'm reading another fine book. The title is The Most Famous Woman in Baseball, 
Effa Manley and the Negro Leagues by Bob Luke, 2001. Effa and her husband, Abe Manley, were the owners of the Newark Eagles in the Negro National League from 1936 to 1948. And uh, 1937, uh, Effa became a very outspoken leader in the Negro National League. Very interesting because she was a, uh, you know, she was a woman. This was, this was, it was a man's world. And actually, she was inducted in, into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2006. By 1938, Satchel Paige was, had become the property of the Newark Eagles, uh, but he uh, decided to play in Venezuela and Mexico to make more money. Page wrote, wrote, wrote a letter to the Eagles and said he'd play for them if M. F. A. Manley would be, would be his sideline girlfriend, and there was no response from the team. Negro League teams were playing about 200 games a year. Two-thirds of them were non-league games against white semi-pro teams. This is why the Negro League statistics were, are so meager, because uh, you know, they kept track of stats of, uh, of, of league games, but most of the games they played were, not, uh, were, were non-league against white semi-pro teams. As I said, there was no Negro League team in Cleveland between 1935 and 1938. The 1939 Bears home open opener was at Cleveland Municipal Stadium, and, and Cleveland Mayor Harold Burton threw out the first pitch. The Bears won a doubleheader, 5-3 to three and 5-1. to one. The Bears were in first place at the end of May. Lem Williams, general manager, gave away 50 box seat tickets for a June 17th game. Now they, were, they were reserved for the first 50 women to ask for them at Boyd's Music Store on Cedar Avenue in Cleveland. Now, the East-West All-Star team in 1939, there were four Bears made the team, including Leo Preacher Henry, Parnell Woods, Raymond and Raymond Smokey Owens, and the manager, Alonzo Mitchell, who was a coach. Uh, during this era, Negro League players were playing in Latin America, uh, Dominican Republic, Mex- Mexico, Venezuela. Willie, Will, Willie Wells said this, quote, I found freedom and democracy here something I never found in the United States. Here in Mexico, I am a man. Now, the downfall of the Pittsburgh Crawfords, one of the great teams, so, uh, can be traced to 1937 when, when there was an exodus of players, including Satchel Page, or led by Satchel Page, to the Dominican Republic to play on a team owned by the dictator, Rafael Trujillo, the Los Dragones de Ciudad Trujillo. Now, going back to Effa Manley, Negro League historian Mark Rabowski wrote, quote, In Effa Manley, the men of the Negro Leagues had on their hands a pre-feminist terror. Long before there was a marge shot in baseball, that's the owner of the Cincinnati Reds years ago, Effa Manley created much more of a fuss in baseball, the difference being that Effa made sense when she spoke. Late in the 1930s, uh, track and field star Jesse Owens became a superstar and inspiration for African Americans, especially after his uh, winning four gold medals at the uh, 1936 Berlin Germany Olympics. And another superstar and inspiration was was heavyweight boxer boxing champion Joe Lewis, who defeated quite a few uh, white uh, opponents to, and to, to to become the champion and to retain his championship. So these two. Uh, Jesse Owens and, and Joe Lewis were very, very inspiring for African Americans. The Negro League, the Negro American League had been established in 1937. It lasted to, until 1962. And John L. Wilkinson, the owner of the Kansas City Monarchs, was the founder of the league. He was white, actually. So as I said, by 1937, starting in 1937, there were the two leagues, the Negro American League and the Negro National League. The owner of the Cleveland Bears in 1939 was J.B. Greer. Not much information on him. The general manager was Lem Williams, who was unable to get a lease at League Park, which would have been better because it was closer to the population centers and uh, in Cleveland. And he was fired at the end of the season. Well, Williams was a longtime Cleveland promoter. He was a former official with Rube Foster's Chicago American Giants in the 1920s. In 1937, he was considered... Uh, to be president of the Negro National League. He worked for various Cleveland Negro League teams and was a pl- player himself in the Negro Leagues between 1907 and 1914, Lem Williams. The player manager for the 1939 Bears was Alonzo Mitchell, who batted 235 with four hits. He scored a run, had a double, an RBI in eight games. 
He also did a little pitching. It was 0-1 with an ERA of 2.45. Three games, 11 innings pitched, and five strikeouts. They called him Bo Fluke and Hooks. He was a pitcher, first baseman, outfielder, and manager during his career. Mitchell played for the Baltimore Black Sox, Atlantic City Baccarat Giants, Harrisburg Giants, Akron Tyrites, Jacksonville Redcaps, Birmingham Black Barons, Atlanta Black Crackers, Indianapolis ABCs, and the Cleveland Bears between 1923 and 1941. He was a sidearm curveballer, also bow-legged. Mitchell was born in 1905 in Jacksonville, Florida, and died in 1963 in Jacksonville at age 58. He went to Morris Brown College in Atlanta, Georgia. For his career as a pitcher, he was 33-10, and 10, with an ERA of 6.15. Ten games, four starts, a, sh- a shutout, a save, 105 it- and a third innings pitched, and 36 strikeouts. So these are in league games. And who knows, his stats in, in non-league games must have been much greater, although they didn't keep track of them. As a hitter, Mitchell batted 253 with 21 hits. He scored nine runs, had three doubles, a triple, five RBIs, walked five times in 54 games. And as a man- manager, he won 65 games, lost 104 for a winning percentage of 385. Alonzo Mitchell. <clears throat> now the uh, everyday lineup, Henry Turner was the catcher. They called him Dad uh, or Flash. Turner batted 393 with 33 hits. Scored 11 runs, 3 doubles, 5 triples, a home run, 21 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, 7 walks in 23 games. During his career, Turner was a catcher, second baseman, first baseman, left fielder, and right fielder. Turner played for the Jacksonville Redcaps, Cleveland Bears, Homestead Grays, Harrisburg, St. Louis Stars, and Cleveland Buckeyes between 1935 and 1943. He was an exceptionally hard hitter, very tough in the clutch. He was a cleanup hitter for the Bears in 1939. Turner was born in 1913 in Lloyd, Florida. For his career, he batted 274 with 82 hits. He scored 42 runs, had 12 doubles, 8 triples, a home run, 48 RBIs, 4 stolen bases, 33 walks in 88 games. Henry Turner. Mint Jones was at first base. His given name was Ernest. They called him Mint. He batted 268 with 19 hits. He scored 10 runs, had three doubles, seven RBIs, a stolen base, five walks in 21 league games. Jones played for the Jacksonville Redcaps, Philadelphia Stars, and Cleveland Bears between 1934 and 1941. He was noted for making a long stretch on close plays at first base, as well as on errant throws, and he batted lead, leadoff. Jones batted, was born in 1910 in Tampa, Florida. For his career, he batted 279 with 48 hits. He scored 19 runs, had 5 doubles, 25 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, 11 walks, and 48 league games. Mint Jones. Al Frazier was at second base. They called him Cool Papa. He, was born, he, he batted 297 with 22 hits. He scored 11 runs, 3 doubles, 11 RBIs, a stolen base, 8 walks, and 23 league games. Frazier a play for the Mon- Montgomery Gray Sox, Jacksonville Redcaps, and Cleveland Bears between 1932 and 1940. He's a good utility player, fast on the bases. He got his nickname Cool Papa uh, after f- the famous speedster Cool Papa Bell. Frazier was born in 1915 in Jacksonville, Florida, and died in 1999 in Jacksonville at age 84. For his career, he batted 244 with 53 hits. He scored 26 runs, had 8 doubles, a triple, 24 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, 18 walks in 62 games. Al Frazier. Parnell Woods played third base. Woods batted 282 with 24 hits. He scored 16 runs, had 3 doubles, 4 triples, 13 RBIs, 7 stolen bases, 7 walks in 22 league games. During his career, he was a third baseman and a manager. He played for the Birmingham Black Barons, Jacksonville Redcaps, Cleveland Bears, Cincinnati Buckeyes, Cleveland Buckeyes, Oakland Oaks in the Pacific League, uh, in, in, in the, white, the White Leagues, and the, and the Louisville Buckeyes and the Memphis Red Sox and the Chicago American Giants between 1933 and 1951. Woods was a team leader, a fighter, strong hitter, a good base dealer, good fielder, but he had a weak arm. He was on the East-West All-Star team four times between 1939 and 1942. 1942, he was the youngest manager managing the Cincinnati Buckeyes. 
1945 with the Cleveland Buckeyes, he won a Negro League World Series title. He also played winter ball in Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Venezuela. After he retired, he was the business manager for the Harlem Globetrotters basketball team for 27 years. Wow. Uh, Woods was born in 1912 in Cordova, Alabama, and died in 1977 in Cleveland, Ohio at age 65. He's buried in Lake, Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, a famous cemetery where John D. Rockefeller and James A. Garfield are, and others are buried. For his career, Woods batted 282 with 191 hits. He scored 108 runs, 29 doubles, 15 triples, 3 home runs, 84 RBIs, 34 stolen bases, 42 walks in 180 games. As a manager, he won 115 games, lost 106 for a winning percentage of 520. Parnell Woods. <clears throat> John Lyles was the shortstop. Lyles batted 304 with 24 hits. He scored 12 runs, had 5 doubles, 9 RBIs, 4 stolen bases, 5 walks in 19 league games. Lyles in his career was an outfielder, shortstop, second baseman, third baseman, and catcher. He played for the Indianapolis ABCs, Homestead Grays, Cleveland Bears, St. Louis Stars, New Orleans St. Louis Stars, the Chicago American Giants, Cincinnati Buckeyes, Cleveland Buckeyes, and Indianapolis Clowns between 1932 and 1943. He was a hustling ball player with a good arm. 1939 with the Bears, he batted third in the lineup. Lyles was born in 1912 in St. Louis, Missouri, and died in 1991 at age 79. For his career, he batted 251 with 98 hits. He scored 61 runs, 12 doubles, 2 triples, a home run, 32 RBIs, 16 stolen bases, 37 walks, and 111 games. John Lyles. Ralph Coles was in left field. They called him Ascari and Punjab. Coles batted 368 with 7 hits. He had a double, 3 RBIs, 3 walks, and 8 games. During his career, he was a left fielder, center fielder. He played for the Cleveland Bears, Jacksonville Redcaps, Ethiopian Clowns, Cincinnati Clowns, and Indianapolis Clowns between 1939 and 1946. So he was a rookie in 1939. He batted sixth in the order. Coles was born in 1913 in Kissimmee, Florida, and died in 1984 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at age 71. For his career, he batted 190 with 12 hits. He scored seven runs, had a double, seven RBIs, a stolen base, nine walks in 22 league games. Ralph Coles. Johnny Ray was in center field. Ray batted 231 with 18 hits. He scored 18 runs, had three doubles, a triple, four RBIs, two stolen bases, 10 walks in 21 games. During his career, Ray played center field, left field, second base, third base, and catcher. He played for the Montgomery Gray Sox, Pittsburgh Crawfords, the Claybrook Tigers, Birmingham Black Barons, Chicago American Giants, Cleveland Bears, Jacksonville Red Caps, Cincinnati Clowns, Cincinnati Indianapolis Clowns, and the Kansas City Monarchs. Between 1931 and 1945, he was a hustling ball player with good speed and a fine base stealer and a good bunner. He was a good contact hitter and expert at Pepperball. He was an expert pepperball artist, was use, which became useful playing for the clowns, which uh, joking around was part of their entertainment value. Ray was born in 1911 in Williamson County, Tennessee, and died in 1957 in Nashville, Tennessee at age 45. Tragic. For his career, Ray betted 227 with 106 hits. He scored 77 runs, had four doubles, six triples, 27 RBIs, seven stolen bases, 68 walks in 136 games. Johnny Ray. Duke Cleveland was in right field. Playing, playing for Cleveland. His given name was Howard. They called him Duke. Cleveland batted 254 with 16 hits. He scored 14 runs, had two doubles, seven, home run, seven RBIs, 10 walks in 19 games. Cleveland played for the Jacksonville Redcaps, Cleveland Bears, Cincinnati Buckeyes, Cleveland Buckeyes, and Indianapolis Clowns. Between 1938 and 1946, he had good power. 1941, he was on the East-West All-Star team. Cleveland was born in 1916 in Alapaha, Georgia, and died in 1970 in Jacksonville, Florida at age 53. For his career, he batted 279 with 147 hits. 101 runs, 12 doubles, 5 triples, 2 home runs, 57 RBIs, 17 stolen bases, 58 walks in 141 games. Duke Cleveland. 
Now, the bench players included Clarence Lamar, who was a shortstop. Uh, Lamar batted 179 with five hits. He scored four runs, had two RBIs, a stolen base, three walks in 11 games. He also was called Horatio and Lemon. During his career, he played shortstop, second base, and third base. Lamar played for the St. Louis Stars, Birmingham Black Barons, Jacksonville Red Caps, Cleveland Bears, Atlanta Black Crackers, and Indianapolis ABCs. Between 1937 and 1942, he was a light-hitting middle infielder, usually batted eighth in the order. He went to Morehouse College. Lamar was born in 1915 in, in Montgomery, Alabama. For his career, he batted 241 with 79 hits. He scored 41 runs, had 11 doubles, 4 triples, a home run, 37 RBIs, 11 stolen bases in 101 games. Clarence Lamar. Walter Birch was a spare catcher. Birch batted 115 with 3 hits. He scored a run, had an RBI, 3 walks in 8 games. During his career, Birch played catcher, short, second base, shortstop, pitcher, and was a manager. Birch played for the Atlantic City Baccarat Giants, Washington Pilots, the Newark Dodgers, Baltimore Black Sox, Kansas City Monarchs, Homestead Grays, the Cleveland Bears, Chicago American Giants, New Orleans St. Louis Stars, the St. Louis Stars, Cincinnati Buckeyes, and Cleveland Buckeyes between 1931 and 1946. He was mostly a catcher during his career. Birch was born in 1910. For his career, he batted 204 with 20 hits. He scored six runs, had a double and a triple. Nine RBIs, four walks in 33 games. And as a manager, he won 13 games, lost 40 for a winning percentage of 245. Walter Birch. Philly Holmes played some shortstop. His given name was Leroy Thomas. They called him Philly. He batted 235 with four hits. He scored four runs, had a double, two RBIs, two stolen bases, three walks in six games. Holmes played shortstop and second base during his career. He played for the Jacksonville Red Caps, Atlanta Black Crackers, Cleveland Bears, Kansas City Monarchs, New York Black Yankees, and, and the Cincinnati Indianapolis Clowns. Between 1938 and 1945, he was a slick fielding middle infielder, deadly on ground balls, and was very good at the pivot on the double play. Very smart and alert, and a hustling ball player, and a superb bunter. After he retired, he became a scout for the St. Louis Browns in the MLB. Holmes was born in 1914 in Brunswick, Georgia. For his career, he batted 246 with 49 hits. He scored 25 runs, had two doubles, three RBIs, a home run, 26 RBIs, nine stolen bases, 14 walks, and 49 league games. Philly Holmes. Joe Royal played some left field. Royal batted 125 with two hits. He scored a run, had an RBI, a stolen base, two walks, and six games. Royal in his career was an outfielder, pitcher, infielder, and catcher. He played for the Indianapolis Athletics, Jacksonville Redcaps, New York Black Yankees, and Cleveland Bears between 1937 and 1942. He was a hard hitter and a good fast fielder with a strong arm. Royal was born in 1912 in Atlanta, Georgia, and died in 1975 at age 62. For his career, he batted 224 with 32 hits. Scored 15 runs, had three doubles, a home run, 14 RBIs, five stolen bases, 10 walks, and 40 league games. Joe Royal. Eugene Tyler played some right field. He batted eight times, did not have a hit in two games. Tyler played for the Jacksonville Redcaps, Cleveland Bears, and Kansas City Monarchs between 1939 and 1943. For his career, he batted 200 with six hits. He scored two runs, had seven RBIs, a stolen base, two walks, and eight games. Eugene Tyler. David Watley played some right field. Rot Watley batted 375 with three hits and eight at bats. He scored a run, had a double, two RBIs, a stolen base in two games. He also they called him Dave Speed and Hammerman. Watley played for the Birmingham Black Barons, Memphis Red Sox, Jacksonville Redcaps, Cleveland Bears, Homestead Grays, New York Black Yankees, and Pittsburgh Crawfords between 1936 and 1946. He was fast out of the batter's box going to first base, a good leadoff hitter. He won, a new, he won Negro League World Series titles four times with the Homestead Grays between 1939 and 1942. He was born in 1914 in Griffin, Georgia, and died in 1961 in Oakland, California at age 46. For his career, he batted 326 with 276 hits, 162 runs, 40 doubles, 17 triples, 9 home runs, 
108 RBIs, 31 stolen bases, 65 walks, and 218 league games. A fine career for David Watley. Dan Thomas played some left field. He batted 400 with two hits and five at-bats. He had a walk in two games. Thomas played was an outfielder and pitcher. He played for the Cincinnati Tigers, Chicago American Giants, Jacksonville Red Caps, Cleveland Bears, and Birmingham Black Barons between 1936 and 1940. For his career, he batted 204 with 11 hits. He scored five runs, had a double, two RBIs, six walks in 19 games. Dan Thomas. Jack Bruton played some left field. He batted four times, did not have a hit in two games. During his career, Bruton was a pitcher, outfielder, first baseman, third baseman, and second baseman. Bruton played for the Birmingham Black Barons, Philadelphia Stars, Cleveland Bears, New York Black Yankees, and New Orleans St. Louis Stars between 1936 and 1941. Bruton was born in 1912 in Cordova, Alabama. For his career as a pitcher, he was 6-6 six six with an ERA of 5.79. 20 games, 11 starts, 8 complete games, 102 and a third innings pitched, and 48 strikeouts. As a hitter, Bruton batted, in his career batted 227 with 25 hits. He scored 14 runs, had 6 doubles, a triple, 6 RBIs, 3 walks in 42 games. Jack Bruton. Jack Moore played some left field. He had a batting average of 1,000. He batted once, had a hit, and an RBI in one game. And his MLB career was just with the Cleveland Bears in 1939, so he had a lifetime batting average of 1,000. Jack Moore. Andy Sarvis uh, played for the Bears. They called him Smokey. He batted twice, did not have a hit in two games. Sarvis played for the Cleveland Bears and Jacksonville Red Caps between 1939 and 1942. He was born in 1907 in Seville, Florida, and died in 1976 in Jacksonville, Florida, at age 68. For his career as a pitcher, he was 6-4 with an ERA of 4.00, 16 games, 9 starts, 7 complete games, 87 and two-thirds innings pitched, and 41 strikeouts. As a hitter, Sarvis batted 195 in his career with 8 hits. He scored 2 runs, 2 doubles, 6 RBIs, 4 walks, and 21 league games. Andy Sarvis. Uh, the pitching staff was anchored by Preacher Henry. They called him Leo. Henry was 5-2 and two with an ERA of 3.33, 13 games, 11 starts, 6 complete games, a shutout, 92 innings pitched, and 42 strikeouts. Henry batted 200 with 6 hits. He scored a run, had 2 doubles, 2 RBIs, 3 walks, and 14 games. Henry played for the Jacksonville Red Caps, Cleveland Bears, Cincinnati Clowns, and Indianapolis Clowns, between 1938 and 1951, he played on the 1941 East-West All-Star Team. He was, for two years, he was in the U.S. Army during the Second World War. He was born in 1911 in, in, in Inverness, Florida, and died in 1992 in Jacksonville, Florida, at age 81. For his career, Henry was 19-23 and 23 with an ERA of 4.31, 59 games, 47 starts, 26 complete games, three shutouts, 361 innings pitched, and 212 strikeouts. As a hitter, he batted 0-98 with 12 hits. He scored eight runs and had two doubles, 11 walks in 60 games. A fine career for Preacher Henry. Smokey Owens was 8-1, and one, so you could say he really was the ace of the staff. His given name was Raymond. They called him Smokey. He had an ERA of 2.04, 10 games, 8 starts, 5 complete games, a shutout, 66 in a third innings pitched, and 20 strikeouts. Owens batted 222 with 6 hits. He scored a run, had a double, and 4 RBIs. During his career, he was a pitcher and an outfielder. Owens played for the Jacksonville Red Caps, Cleveland Bears, New Orleans St. Louis Stars, Ethiopian Clowns, and Cincinnati Buckeyes between 1938 and 1942. In 1942, he was involved. In, he died in, from an in an untimely. He had a, he met an untimely demise from an auto accident. Owens was driving along with five Cincinnati uh, Buckeyes teammates. He was hit from behind by a truck and killed. Uh, Ulysses Buster uh, Brown was also killed in that horrible accident. Eugene Bremer, Herman Watts were hospitalized. Alonzo Boone, the owner. Um, and Wilbur Hayes, uh, Alonzo Boone, and owner Wilbur Hayes had minor injuries. It happened at 3 a.m. in West Geneva, Ohio, on a return trip after a series in New York City with the Black Yankees. 
Owens was trying to re-enter the highway after stopping to change a flat tire and was, was killed in that horrible car accident. Owens was born in 1912 in Manning, South Carolina, and died in 1942 in Geneva, Ohio, at age 30. Tragic, for his career he was 10-5 and five with an ERA of 2.74, 24 games, 17 starts, 9 complete games, a shutout, 2 saves, 125 innings pitched, and 36 strikeouts. Owens in his career batted 220 with 11 hits. Scored 2 runs, had a double, 4 RBIs, and 26 games. Smokey Owens. Bernard Fernand- Fernandez uh, was another pitcher. He's, they called him Toto and Big Train. Fernandez was 0-1 with an ERA of 8.00. One game, one start, one complete game, nine innings pitched, and four strikeouts. He batted three times, did not have a hit. Fernandez played for the Atlantic Atlanta Black Crackers, Jacksonville Red Caps, Pittsburgh Crawfords, and New York Black Yankees between 1938 and 1949. He was born in 1918 in Tampa, Florida, and died in 2014 in North Las Vegas, Nevada, at age 96. For his career, he was 1-2 with an ERA of 7.27, 5 games, 3 starts, a complete game, 17 and a third innings pitched, and 9 strikeouts. He batted 5 times, did not have a hit in 5 games, and obviously these are very incomplete statistics. Bernard Fernandez. Red Howard was 1-1 with an ERA of 6.75. Two games, one start, five and a third innings pitched, and four strikeouts. Howard batted 667 with two hits and three at bats. He scored a run, had a double, two RBIs, and a walk. They called him Red, Roy, and Lefty. Howard played for the Little Rock Black Travelers, Atlanta Black Crackers, Memphis Red Sox, Indianapolis Athletics, Birmingham Black Barons, Jacksonville Red Caps, Washington Elite Giants, Indianapolis ABCs, Cleveland Bears, Kansas City Monarchs, and the American Giants between 1932 and 1946. He called his fastball dead red. 1938-38 in the Negro American League, he won a second-half title with the Atlanta Black Crackers. They said he was as wild as a jackrabbit. Uh, Howard was stocky, a fair hitter. He was born in 1910 in Birmingham, Alabama, and died in 1969 in Birmingham at age 59. For his career, he was 6-9 with an ERA of 5.37, 27 games, 13 starts, 4 complete games, 2 saves, 105 and 2 thirds innings pitched, and 65 strikeouts. Howard batted 263 in his career with 15 hits. He scored 7 runs, had 2 doubles, a home run, 11 RBIs, a stolen base, 4 walks, and 37 games. Red Howard, Player by the name of Davis, no first name indicated, he was 1-1 with an ERA of 54.00. One game, one start, two-thirds of an innings pitched, and four earned runs allowed. Davis did not bat. His career was just with the Cleveland Bears in 1939. guy named Davis. Another player named Andrews, again, no first name given, he was 0-1 with an ERA of 67.50. One game, one start, two-thirds of an, inning, of an inning pitched, and five earned runs allowed. He did not bat, and again, in his career with the, was just with the Cleveland Bears in 1939. Andrews. Alonzo Boone uh, had no decisions and an ERA of 4.50. Two games, six innings pitched, and three strikeouts. Boone batted twice, did not have a hit. Boone played for the Cleveland Cubs in 1931, and the Cleveland Bears between 1939 and 1940, and then with the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1943, from 1945 to 1948, and in 1950, Alonzo Boone. And finally, Willie Farrell was 1-0 with, with an ER, ERA of 0.00, one game, six innings pitched, and zero earned runs allowed, and three strikeouts. Farrell batted 333 with one hit and three at-bats. He scored a run in two games. They called him Red. He's a pitcher outfielder. He played for the Birmingham Black Barons, Jacksonville Red Caps, Cleveland Bears, Homestead Grays, Chicago American Giants, and Cincinnati Clowns between 1937 and 1943. He won pennants with the Homestead Grays from 1939 to 1940. His middle name was Trueheart. For his career, he was 11-11 with an ERA of 3.81. 30 games, 20 starts, 14 complete games, 2 shutouts, 182 innings pitched and 67 strikeouts. Farrell in his career batted 260 with 32 hits. He scored 12 runs, had two doubles. Uh, 
Uh, 11 RBIs, four walks in 52 games, and two, uh, along with two triples. Willie Farrell. Now, there were two champions in 1939 in the Negro Leagues. The, uh, in the Negro American League, the Kansas City Monarchs defeated the St. Louis Stars four games to one in the championship series. And, then, and, and in the Negro National League, the Baltimore Elite Giants defeated the Homestead Grays three games to one in their championship series. There was no World Series played, so there, so there were these two champions of the Negro Leagues. The top hitter in the Negro Leagues in 1939 was Josh Gibson of the Homestead Grays, and the top pitcher in the Negro Leagues was Hilton Smith of the Kansas City Monarchs. So that's the story of the 1939 Cleveland Bears. They had a pretty good year. Uh, a year to be proud of. God bless the fellows who played for the Cleveland Bears in 1939 and everyone else associated with the team, including the fans, especially the Civil War veterans, Spanish-American War veterans, and First World War veterans. Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, fans of the Free Stamp statue and the Fountain of Eternal Life, Euclid Avenue Electricity, Severance Hall Stalwarts, Cleveland Museum of Art, uh, enthusiasts, uh, Christmas Story House, Happy People, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum enthusiasts, First Energy Stadium Friends, Progressive Field Pals, Quicken Loans Arena enthusiasts, Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters, and Gladiators Rule, Cleveland City of Champions. Cleveland is the best location in the nation on the north coast of America. New York is the Big Apple, Cleveland is a plum. Before you know it, it'll be opening day 2019 for the Cleveland Indians. Go Tribe! Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History, with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. Thanks again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.